before. My name is Maria Cruz. I'm a program manager in the Google Open Source Program Office. Uh, here with me is uh, Sainan Victor Su. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Zainan, uh, and uh, I also go by Victor. Uh, I work on Google Search as the tech lead for uh, uh, Wikiloop project. And Ilan. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ilan. Um, I work with uh, um, Victor and Maria on the Wikiloop project, and I also work in Google's, uh, on Google's knowledge graph, mainly focusing on information retrieval. Great. Uh, and we are going to present today the Wikiloop program. Uh, it's an umbrella program under which we develop tools uh, for Wikipedia communities and other wiki projects. And uh, we want to show our framework for, which is an exploration on how big tech can contribute to the open knowledge world. So, uh, sorry. Um, this is the agenda for today. Um, uh, we are going to talk briefly about the Wikiloop program, uh, how Wikiloop is machine learning, uh, how we build for community participation, and then we're going to have a, a demo of uh, two different tools, and we're going to have some time for Q&A and feedback. So I'm going to pass it on to Sainan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Maria. Yeah, so the project Wikiloop is set out as a uh, virtual circle. Uh, we want to provide data to the uh, and tools to en enhance the uh, human editor's productivity. And in this case, uh, we mean the Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia uh, is one of the uh, most important uh, information source that we use to index and to serve our user the knowledge. And uh, we want to contribute and make them all uh, machine readable and also improve the editor, editor's productivity. Um, so this loop allows us to not only contribute to the editor's productivity, but also so that we can further make use of them, make available their inputs, valuable inputs uh, to the institutions, academia, and researchers like uh, ourselves and, uh, and all the open um, knowledge community. Next. So, um, what kind of project fits the project week loop? Uh, we think there's three aspects. There's one, uh, source improvements, maximize neutrality. And the last one would be empower human uh, bootstrap and bootstrap machine. And I will go to each individual, uh, each one of them individually. Can you go to the next slide? So um, the first one being source improvements. Uh, as you know, that we strive to make our algorithms as powerful as possible to extract information. Uh, at a certain point, we will be reaching to the bottleneck determined by the noise level, noise level of the source itself rather than the, uh, how much the algorithms can achieve. Uh, and at that point, we will need to improve the source, uh, uh, reduce the noise in the source level. Um, and uh, we see these kind of projects, one of the first uh, group that fits in Project Wikiloop. For example, uh, for the hard decisions that need to be made across the, uh, it, to determine whether this is noise or it's uh, just a, a, a valid but a unique uh, data point uh, in, the, in the middle circle of the right side, um, that's when uh, we need the help from the, of the human being. So that's the first part. Next slide. And the second part is maximize neutrality. So as you know, Google uh, is a, a, a company, we want to uh, serve our users with the best knowledge uh, and information they need. However, in some areas when opinions are largely divided and controversial, uh, any facts or opinion choice Google made in a knowledge may be deemed as biased by one side uh, and then uh, people will be unhappy. And we don't want to be the in, in the position of picking sides, or we want we, we want to leave it out to the uh, open knowledge community to this, to make the decision, make the judgment call rather than us. So the project wiki will provide uh, provides a means to obtain consensus and maximize their uh, the, our, our neutrality stance uh, by relying on the open knowledge peer reviewed and self governed uh, community. This is a very unique aspect in the open knowledge world as uh, we want to bring value to this, uh, to this conference of all things 
open because uh, I, we know that many of our, our participants come from a background of open source and there's consensus needs to be made. And uh, it's even more, uh, it's, it's sometimes even more intense uh, of a build, consensus building process in the open knowledge world. And uh, we being the technical contributor, contributors uh, need to respect that. And this is a very interesting point. And we have, Maria may uh, share with you additional uh, experience in our journey. Next slide. And the third part, I think, is most relevant to this session, which is the machine le learning respect, uh, uh, perspective. As you know, machine learning lives on, rely on uh, the, uh, the availability of training data. And in many aspects, training data is very, very hard to, uh, to obtain. Um, so uh, that's a problem for machine learning community, but also for the uh, community of open knowledge. Let's take the uh, Wikipedia editors as an example. They uh, are, for example, uh, if, one of the important uh, tasks they do uh, is translating good articles from one language to another language, right? They are mostly doing it by hand uh, before the available, available ability of uh, translations, machine translations, but they are doing it anyway. Um, this is just work that they are passionate about and that they are contributing. But uh, when, when we uh, make this available, for example, some of the translation, even though not as good as the level we will provide to the user, who um, to the regular user, they might be, this translation may already be good enough to provide help with, for the editors. Uh, a little help will go a long way in that case, and then it can save a lot of time for them. And, uh, uh, and also their input when they choose what, which one to be modified to revise as the translation does, uh, as the translation results that can be made available to machine learning as a training data. So this is the alt, alt, one of the ultimate goal that uh, why Wikiloop is very uh, valuable both to the open knowledge community and also to institutions or researchers. So this is the, the third one being uh, we want to bootstrap the use the editors with the productivity and uh, we want to be able to make their input, valuable input, uh, available to machine. So next slide. And with Thank that, I will hand over to, to um, Maria. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I'm going to exit full screen because I want to show you a few things that are on the internet. Um, so uh, for this, I, I wanted to share how we communicated these um, this program and the tools that we are developing uh, to the different Wikipedia communities. I would say that the, the, the very first uh, thing that comes to mind is to communicate early uh, and, and share your ideas from an early stage so that you can get input uh, from Wikipedians uh, and, and build a better tool that is uh, useful for everybody. So um, the the, the first consultation that we had, I mean, the, the first communication was uh, Sainan sharing this on the Wikipedia, on the English Wikipedia Cafe and saying, hey, I'm working on this tool. And the first feedback he got was that we needed to change the name of the tool, which is now called uh, Wikiloop Double Check. It was originally called Battlefield. And this was because the community is really trying to um, find better ways of working together and uh, referencing uh, battle or conflict is not a, a good principle to have. And so the first consultation was uh, asking the community, what do you think this tool should be called? And I just wanted to show you what this looks like. We had a page created on Meta Wikimedia, which is the project where all meta projects are discussed or across a uh, language version Wikipedias. And uh, we talked about how uh, we received this feedback from the community and that there were uh, different suggestions for a name and we narrowed down uh, to three different options. And uh, then we sent a, a mass message uh, via Meta Wikimedia to all of the uh, uh, Wikiloop uh, two users and asking them to, um, to vote on what name they thought was more appropriate. And uh, this is what a vote looks like. So under each of the names, people voted and they expressed uh, what they felt was the best idea. And so as you can see, 
double check was uh, by far the, the favorite one. Um, so that was one consultation that we had. Uh, then once we have the name and this squares are not in order, so apologies for that. Uh, we did more outreach to Wikipedians and we said, okay, we have a name that is backed by the community. The, the tool has been in use for some time by Wikipedians. Let's talk about it more. Uh, and so we wrote an article on a newsletter for English Wikipedia called the Signpost, which is published uh, monthly. And we, we talked about what Wikiloop is. We had a, a, a short gift a small gift here where we show how the tool works um, and we explain how the tool um, uses existing uh, machine learning models and, and tries to improve them. Um, and then we received a lot of feedback uh, from Wikipedians uh, that, that were reacting to the story. Uh, some of them shared concerns, other people said they loved it. And all in all, uh, see, seeing this as from a tool development perspective, it's just great user feedback to have because a lot of these comments, uh, while they can feel a bit snarky sometimes uh, or sarcastic, they are actually providing a, a points to look at that we could improve for these tools. So this is what this conversation looks like with the uh, Wikipedia communities. Um, and so that was the story that we shared on the signpost. And finally, uh, we did a request for comment uh, for users of the tool to tell us what they, uh, uh, we wanted their feedback on uh, how to build trust levels for users and uh, enabling uh, users to have different privileges uh, depending on how much they use the tool. And so we, we described how uh, we, we gave them the design summary and how we're thinking about it. Um, what each level would uh, enable. And then uh, people would, again, vote and offer their comments and uh, describe how they saw this initiative for Wikiloop, a uh, double check. And uh, yeah, so those were the three instances in which we did this outreach. And the way that this uh, impacted the uh, Wikiloop double check was that we were able to reach the 100,000 reviews milestone, I think, in September. Um, this outreach campaign, uh, with these consultations and the, the article on the signpost uh, was carried out during August. And uh, all of those actions allowed us to increase uh, the user base by 30%. So we, we gained 30% more users that started to use uh, Wikiloop double check. Um, so I think as a, as a conclusion of, of this section of the presentation, I would say that involving the community early is paramount to the success of the tool and to its, um, uh, to its use and incorporation on editor workflows. And I think with that, I'm going to pass it back to Sainan, who is going to do a demo. May I, may I present from my, my computer? Yes. So I'm going to stop sharing. For other audience, uh, if you're interested, you can pull up your um, your browser and then type doublecheck.wikiloop.org, and then you will get uh, access to our app. So this is another is example and one of our current flagship uh, project in uh, in the umbrella of Wikiloop. And uh, it's a vandalism review tool called Wikiloop Double Check, as uh, Maria just uh, uh, just introduced to you how it gets its current name. Before that, it was called Battlefield, and with a notion of fighting vandalisms to, all together. And the community liked the tool, but didn't like the name because they say we want a more collaborative name. So we changed it to Double Check by the, the voting process that mentioned Maria mentioned. But I, I want to show you how it works and why it represents the um, the three P, the three aspirate, three criteria that we mentioned before, which is source improvement, max with neutrality, and also um, the uh, bootstrap um, uh, empower human and bootstrap machine. So when you go to this website, uh, this is a tool, and uh, uh, it will pull up the uh, the most recent uh, one of the most recent edits on Wikipedia, and then 
with that, uh, you can see that uh, if we are unsure about whether this is a vandalism, um, we'll go with unsure. You can mark each individual rev revisions and then, um, and then uh, some of them will be shown to you as vandalisms, right? And uh, if you discover any vandalisms, uh, let me reflash. Mm -hmm. For example, this is one of the um, apparent vandalism just happened one minute ago. And then if you go to Wikipedia, it just so happened. And then uh, it's like it's blanking. Uh, the, the editor has been blanking uh, the page and add some uh, gibberish on the page. So it's a obvious vandalism. And then you can click should revert to mark it as a vandalism or a damaging edit. And then there's a button showing up for you to allow you to go to Wikipedia on the, uh, the page and then you can publish it. And then by that you help to remove one of the noise on the page. That's one thing. And then also the process is done by not machine, but by the editors just like you and me or any open knowledge contribute uh, open knowledge uh, ecosystems uh, this allows us to re to to uh, leverage the the power of neutrality on the community or self governance there um, and then the third one is that we are making this process very easy to download or to use API to crawl so that uh, when users are reviewing the vandalisms it's easy it's uh, their input are being made available to researchers and um, and and institutions and 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 just like all open, other open projects. So this is the overall idea. Now, one of the most uh, hardest problem here is to identify potential vandalisms because in on average, as we as we do uh, random sample and human labeling, we found that about uh, one percent to five percent, depending on timing, locale, topics. 1% to 5% of all edits are vandalisms or uh, damaging edits. But if you, uh, if you like to ask everyone individual uh, reviewers to go through every 20 or every 100 edits, so only to identify one of them being vandalisms, that's not, uh, not only just boring, but also unpredictable, uh, productivity, productive. So we leverage things like ORES, a vandalism detection score on Wikipedia, uh, by WMF team and use that to filter out some of the more likely vandalism added, uh, more likely edits uh, that's being, uh, that could potentially be vandalism and ask people to, uh, to review. That improves people, people's productivity, motiva motivates editors. And um, uh, what's, you might ask, okay, if in that case, isn't that uh, creating a feedback loop that uh, machine learning models is just reinforcing itself? That's right. In this case, it's, it's possible. However, uh, we also provide uh, a portion of the edits as purely random sample. So we maintain a uh, unbiased uh, in, uh, stream of labels that is not interfered by the man, uh, machine learning algorithm, as long as we keep that portion of um, a reasonable amount so that users are still having a high productivity, but also there's a, a, a good enough amount of band, uh, labels that are being contributed from, uh, from a random sample. And future work will include uh, us to discover or to choose, uh, uh, intelligently choose uh, the uh, revisions for label uh, by those that is closer to boundary of uh, vandalism. For example, they're either very likely, uh, very, uh, very unlikely to uh, be vandalism or very likely to be vandalism. E either one of them would already be uh, covered by the machine learning models. We need to, we can make more uh, uh, model improvement by focusing on, uh, by use apply approaches like uh, active learning. So that's the overall case. And with that, I want to hand back to Maria I think you are muted. Yes. Um, I think you need to stop sharing screen. Great. So, and I think next up is done with the going to demo CBS check. So I'm going to stop sharing. Then we're on. Cool. Yeah. Uh, well, would you mind uh, presenting the? Uh, uh, or sorry, I, I I can I can also present. I had some difficulty earlier. 
Yeah, so uh, go to the next slide. Oh, yeah. So um, just some background. Uh, so one thing, one uh, current problem in the, the wiki community is that despite growing readership, there's been a decline in editorship over uh, for the you know the past uh, ten years or so, um, and based on exit studies and just um, um, talking to the community, um, it's well known that there's a problem with uh, toxicity, um, rude comments, and just incivility between passionate editors, which has led some some people to to um, stop volunteering their time. And as uh, proponents of the open knowledge ecosystem, we really want to, you know, try and address this just to um, improve the number of active people he, um, involved to in, improve both the coverage and the quality. Um, so this summer, um, we had three very talented interns who um, decided to tackle this problem. Um, and in a sim in a approach similar to double check. Um, using machine learning to empower editors to address this issue themselves. Um, so you know, the next slide. Um, so some of you may be uh, familiar with uh, Project Jigsaw. Um, essentially, this is a um, project with an uh, open API to try and um, address incivility on the web. And this is just a, you know, a machine learning model to cl do text classifications. Um, so uh, you just take take some sample text, input it into the model, and you'll get scores for a number of different dimensions, including toxicity, sexually explicit, um, identity attacks, etc. Um, and we, for for civility check, we just use this signal and put it in the hands of wiki editors to try and um, improve discourse. In the community, um, so uh, similar to um, double check, there's in no cases does that does this tool take action on behalf of users or take automated actions. It's just a tool to help improve throughput and make people more efficient. Um, currently, there are around two edits per second. Um, on Wikipedia, so it's intractable for editors to try and monitor these um, themselves. In the end, so rather than being proactive in addressing instability, everything is reactive based on uh, um, user reports. So um, this, these typically have a long delay before someone actually steps out in addressing them. So this tool uh, aims to quickly detect toxic behavior. And then send a friendly reminder to say, "Hey, you know, you know, we're all on the same uh, team. We're trying to, you know, improve this system. And like, if need be, escalate this, um, or give the give users of the tool an option to escalate this to um, to uh, community moderators. Um, and we're currently uh, running on a reduced uh, API, so we're only processing a certain subset of." of um, wiki uh, edits and comments, but why, once we move this to production, we aim to scale up. So uh, next slide. Uh, thanks. Yeah, so this is just a overall view. We just we are querying the Wikimedia API um, to get uh, comments and uh, revisions, sending it to get classified by the perspective API, and then um, publishing them to, to our tool um, in a variety of different views. Um, so next slide. Um, so here's just a demo of um, what a user will see. Uh, essentially, since we aim to try and you maximize the, um, edit the volunteer's time and throughput, we show them the things that are most likely to be toxic to be addressed immediately, and they are in descending order over a windowed period of time. Um, and from here, we can see which, what, how, how confident our model is in it being in civil. Which revision was um, was the cause? Of it, which user did it? What the comment was, and where it was. So from here, we can then go on to an action view similar to double check um, in the next slide. And um, here, um, here. Uh, we allow the user to take action. You can either mark it as good so that this was 
a this was a um, false positive. Um, we can similarly say, you know, whether this, we, we're just unclear without the context and whether you should report this. And this will, can take the user to um, the um, the user page to send the templated reminder saying, hey, you know, here's uh, here's our guidelines on uh, um, uh, user interactions and our civil civility guidelines, and um, also if um, if necessary, you can, we can report this to the administrator notice board. Um, so, like all machine uh, learning models, um, the perspective API isn't perfect, and we currently get uh, false negatives and false positives. But we um, similarly uh, provide the mechanisms to um, label these. And um, in the process of improving um, wiki discourse, we aim to create an open data set for uh, uh, civility as well. So um, previously, um, there, there, there was an issue with, um, with, with um, some, some potential bias in this model. Um, the wiki community brought this up, and then it had since been addressed by the perspective team. So, um, Creating this, uh, creating um, this, this pot or virtuous feedback loop between oh, using this model to improve editors' throughput, and then also using the results to produce um, better, more accurate models. Um, yeah, this uh, this is one of the the these are the main goals um, for this for this project. Um, and uh, next next slide. So um, we we spoke to. Um, some of some of the uh, team members at the Wikimedia Foundation, and they provide some valuable feedback. Like the the most useful um, aspect of this tool would be able to, you know, do some aggregate stats on individual users. Um, so at, mainly for administrators who have like who have heard, okay, you know, this this user may be um, acting inappropriately. Let's try and get some uh, high level stats to, uh, or let's look over their their full history and see. Whether this is was a one-off event or potentially um, a uh, um, just how how they interact on in in the community, um, so yeah, so so it's similar to the original page, but just um, also gives like average incivility, which um, can be a pretty good metric um, and uh, may may be a good rule of thumb of like okay maybe we may eventually want to look at, OK, we found that this is systematic behavior by these editors and then flag these as well. Um, so that's uh, that's it for uh, civility check. Um, we currently um, are still working on introducing it to the community. Um, we um, we did a few presentations and um, have had some feedback and like how to make it more useful. Um, we're also looking at um, scaling it up. Um, currently, we're, we're uh, we're facing some uh, bottleneck issues um, with our current uh, API restrictions, but um, we're looking to looking to fix those before um, introducing it to the the wider community. But yes, that's that's it on this. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt, and I'm sorry for the um, confusion. My latest schedule lists this as three separate sessions with three speakers. Um, so that's why I was confused when we started. So as far as a Q&A session goes, how exactly would you like to run it? And um, um, will there be two more sessions after after this? Uh, no, the, so this is, uh, this is the session. I'm, that, I'm not uh, able to hear you. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I wonder why. Um, you, you can't hear me at all? I can hear you a little better now, yeah. OK, cool. Yeah, so this is the, the, the one session um, that, that we have. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know how this um, disconnect uh, happened. But yeah, we, we just have this one session. And now I think we're ready for Q&A and feedback. Um, OK, so, so I would say. I would say take all the time you want with um, Q&A. If you go past 1215, uh, that's fine. I'm sure they will still keep recording and everything will be um, in a session. So again, I'm sorry for the confusion. And to the um, attendees, you can ask a question uh, three ways. You can use the Zoom 
chat window. You could use a Zoom Q&A window, or you can raise your hand and we'll um, recognize you. Um, so yeah, we could begin the Q&A session now. Thank you. Yeah, so if you have any, even if you don't have questions, if you have any comments or ideas uh, that were inspired by the presentation, we'd love to hear them as well. Um, yes, feel free to use this online venue for any general discussion um, you wish to have for pretty much uh, as long as you need. Are any of you here attending the session uh, familiar with Wikipedia and how Wikipedia works? Um, We're also looking for uh, comments, questions regarding how uh, human interactions, creating training data in your space, because we know the audience is, uh, many of you are specifically interested in how machine learning uh, can uh, work with the open source or, or, or things open, right? So if you in your own um, uh, domain has uh, challenges in creating training data or uh, uh, you have encountered open knowledge, that would be also very valuable. We look for uh, questions, comments, inputs, suggestions, anything, yeah. So Mike, uh, I, I have not used uh, the, the webinar features. I, uh, if the audience raise hands or uh, type things, or are they able to, to speak into the microphone? Um, if they want to request speaking, um, yes. Uh, most people use the Zoom chat window, which kind of becomes part of a public conversation, or they use a Q&A window, which is private in that um, I believe only you get it, and we check off questions as they are answered. Mm -hmm. um, as an open source advocate, um, I'm happy to see um, more structure entered into programs like um, MediaWiki. Um, I know sort of the original point of it was to not have it too structured and to have it um, free flow. Uh, but I, I, I think there's so much information out there that I can really respect what uh, the company is doing to um, organize it uh, a little more. So that would be that would be my comment as a, a moderator. Thank you. Um... Yes, I can. I can share a bit more uh, about how we how we organize and present this to the community because I think this is the the tricky part. Usually, when working uh, or, or developing something for uh, Wikipedia, um, is usually how do you reach the community? How do you tell them, "Hey, we're here. We're making this." Um, so this is the, the landing page that we have on MetaWiki, where we describe what Wikiloop is, and this is a very similar definition that we shared on the slides. Um, we list the tools that are active, and then we have a, a tab for each of the, um, the most active ways of participating, and people can sign up uh, to show support, etc. I think I may be even able to show what was the first um, the first interaction like. Mm -hmm. Here, yes. Um, this is just a talk page on uh, Wikipedia. Um, a, it's the talk page of the tool on English Wikipedia. Um, it's, I mean, I think it's it's allowed to go through and sometimes it can feel overwhelming, um, but uh, being able to navigate this is actually what uh, sometimes uh, makes the tool really relevant for Wikipedians and, and makes them want to use it, which is what, what we want, so yeah. Uh, I think we have a question. Let me see. 
We do have a question in the uh, Q&A window, yes, from MG. So uh, this may not be related, but is there a long hanging fruit in terms of an easier contribution for someone completely new, but interested in tech? Um, well, you could try to review Wikipedia <laughs> using Wikiloop double check. Um, so if you, it depends on, on what your skill sets, uh, what your skill set is. Um, uh, so I, it's kind of hard to, to give advice um, without knowing that, but uh, what we usually tell people who want to get more involved in tech, um, if they are interested in a project, um, connecting through uh, the documentation of the project is usually a good way to start to contribute to an open source project. Um, because that helps you to, to learn um, how the project works um, and how you can make it work for you. And sometimes it, it's usually the case that open source projects um, have work to do on documentation. Um, it, there's, sometimes there isn't a, any budget, sometimes people are too busy developing a new features. And so uh, coming in as a new person and getting involved through documentation can be helpful um, to the project as well, because you can point to things that are out of date or things that are not working for you and contribute in that way. And in the meantime, learn about the technology. That's an easy way of, uh, or an easier way of getting involved in, in open source, in an open source project. Um, you could also try editing Wikipedia if you like uh, uh, doing that kind of work um, and making information available um, with an open source license. Um, yeah, uh, I think those are the two things that come to my mind. Yeah, I, I, I would also um, say if you, um, if you are aiming to make technical contributions, yeah, the, uh, Wiki project is all open source, and they have a um, they have a uh, fairly plentiful um, outstanding issues uh, page um, that can be that you can you could call say and like hey you know I want to work on this and you know submit pull requests. Um, also, um, a lot of the tools that the community uses are um, similarly um, you know happily accept. Um, outside technical contributions. But also, if you if you know more than one language, one of the, the biggest um, things you can uh, provide um, to improve the Wikipedia tooling is providing translations. And then that, that can be a very um, easy, it, or a low, um, an easy entry point into um, improving uh, these open source Wiki tools. It's like, oh, you know, Here's a translation. Now I'm already looking into the, the source code and such, and um, and then just you know using that as a way of uh, providing back to the community. Because um, yeah, I, one thing I've learned um, as a wiki editor is that it is currently Wikipedia exists on because of manual labor. There's a lot of things that could be improved, could be automated, but they're just they there there hasn't been the uh, the um, the tech technical or the the um, just the the time for the, the the few wiki editors who are particularly technical minded to um, create tools to address these things. So if you see something that you, you think, oh hey, this could be automated, and I know you know I know enough JavaScript, or I you know want to look up the Python wiki bot, and I want to you know do this, like the the community would would love to be happy to have your assistance um, as long as you like give them a heads up before you ru start running a bot that does you know tens of thousands of edits so yeah yeah I would I would check out PyWiki bot if it's if you're looking at a very easy way of like accessing Wikipedia from a programmatic manner
Yep, and one other thing that you can definitely try it out is to go to doublecheck.wikiloop.org and then start reviewing vandalisms and or other damaging edits. Uh, this is one thing that uh, the community has been asked a lot and then uh, they look for their co-contributors to help with that as well. So yeah, that's definitely easy. And then feel free to, if you are technically enough uh, feel free to send us pull requests to improve the tool or any other tool, just like uh, Elon says. Yeah, feel free. Feel free to to you know send a either an email or a Twitter ping to if you if you want to follow up after this session. Mm -hmm. 